All right, let's talk about the New England Patriots' second second-round pick, Josh Uche, outside backer out of Michigan. They took 60th overall. And to take a look at Uche as a player, I think we have to get some context as to what New England likes to do. Uh, we've seen a lot with New England with these hybrid linebackers uh, that other teams have struggled with. In fact, in this early part of it, we're going to take a look at Kyle Van Noy, uh, who's right here to start this particular clip. Kyle started off in Detroit, uh, couldn't find himself in the starting rotation until his third year, started seven games, and then Detroit traded him to, to, to New England, where he has been a primary starter the last three years. And this uh, past month, he actually signed a four-year, $51 million contract with the Miami Dolphins to reunite with defensive, former defensive coordinator Brian Flores, now the head coach of the uh, Miami Dolphins. So, again, these guys that the league has deemed to be tweeners, right? That's a term we've heard a lot. These tweeners are, are players that New England loves. And they just do a great job with. And I wanted to take a look at Van Noy to understand a little more as to why. So, again, uh, we're aligned in here. We're going to see a little bit with him in coverage. Uh, we're going to see a little bit with him on the edge. In this case, he just needs to go relate to number three. In fact, he gets a chance to collision here. All right. And then zone off and fall under number two. So showing some good zone awareness there. So clearly these players that will have edge responsibilities will absolutely see this from Van Noy will also need to have more responsibilities as it pertains to coverage, as it pertains to uh, taking the back, a twist game, so many different pieces that are a part of that as New England front operates. And so a player coming in that's going to have a starting role really has to be a generalist. They really have to have a lot of different things that they bring to the table in order to be really impactful. So in this particular clip, he's aligned here over the center. So they bump to the motion and then adjust back. And here's a chance where he's got to sift through and find the screen. So we're playing at linebacker depth. We'll bring this from the end copy uh, to really show this. So again, these players, they may be labeled as an outside backer. They may spend a lot of time on the edge, but in New England, that doesn't mean that you're an exclusively an edge player. So in this case, again, he's going to have to line up here over the center He's making a lot of the checks and calls, which is something New England's losing here. But now he's going to see these pass sets, and he's got to feel out this screen that Kansas City executes so well, sift through that, and go find the running back. So, again, going to have to have some stacked linebacker ability to play in this system as well. Some of these clips just drag on, don't they? So let's take a look at him here again. Stacked interior alignment. Now we're going to see the ability to operate in twist game and find a path. And so you saw him cross face and come across the center. The end copy will do a great job of highlighting that for us. So again, let's just show the initial alignment. And then his role here is to let these first players penetrate and then he needs to find a path after that to get to the quarterback. So we're feeling this player and we're feeling this player. And he's trying to occupy this guard, but really he's going to be looping back across that. So he feels this penetration here and he's going to occupy that allows this penetrator to get push and then loop in behind that. Really well done here in the twist game. So we're seeing a lot that a linebacker in this system is going to have to do. And now we're into the, uh, the playoff game here against Tennessee. And we're going to start to see him more on the edge. So now we're looking up a zone drop here. They have three options to that side. He starts by finding his low hole position. But then he's reading the quarterback guys and relating back out here. Ball ends up getting tipped, but a good job, and you'll see it again a little better from the end copy. So he's aligning here. After the motion, we'll have three threats outside. He's going to drop to his position low here. He sees this one come back inside, so he saw that. Now he gets his vision back on the quarterback, and as the quarterback's gearing up to throw that, we see him trigger and jump outside. 
to try to be underneath that. So again, zone coverage responsibilities. We're going to have to have stacked linebacker responsibilities. We're going to have to understand how to operate in twist game. A lot of priorities in this uh, uh, this system. So again, this is going to be almost all just on the edge here. And we're going to see him go against a highly paid right tackle in this last uh, free agent market in Jack Conklin here. So now this is that more traditional edge role people are more familiar with. He's going to come with power and walk Conklin back to the quarterback. So if we're keeping track at home, the, the count's getting high on the number of responsibilities here for a player in this system. So now we're down here, have the tight end. Now that trade puts him right here on the tackle. And we've got some twist game action here that he's going to ultimately spin out of and create the pressure. So let's take a look at this from the end copy. So we're going to see him penetrate here. 71 stays, and he's going to end up spinning outside of it. Does a really good job to get pressure here on Tannehill. So we'll slow it down. Kyle anticipates the snap, jumps inside. Tennessee does a good job of walling that off, but he feels an opening now, spins himself back around, and gets on the quarterback. Gets that ball knocked out. They ultimately return it, recover it, but really excellent job. So twist game, we've seen twist game aligned at the linebacker depth. We've seen twist game now out here on the edge. We've seen some short zone coverage responsibilities. We've seen some pass rush responsibilities. There's a lot that needs to be done here to be a linebacker. And you keep noticing how many guys they have up at the line of scrimmage over and over again. They have so many of these body types here. Dante Hightower, Chase Vinovich, Jamie Collins, uh, obviously Van Noy. They collect this body type and use them so well. Let's see him again on the edge. And now he's got to relate to this back. Again, a critical thing. Sometimes as the edge rusher, you need to know when your responsibility is to protect the flat. So in this case, he's responsible for that running back peeling out. So as he departs, he relates. The, the intelligence, the versatility, all these things that you have to do in New England. So now let's take a look at Josh Uche and what does that mean? So you're going to see him align almost exclusively here in this position, right, to the defense's left or the offense's right. This particular game, he gets an opportunity to go against Tristan Worf's right tackle of the Iowa Hawkeyes, who ended up being the 13th overall selection of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that's a, a quality matchup against clearly an NFL tackle. And so we're going to start to get a feel for Josh's pass rush plan and the things that he's bringing to the table right now. Good first two steps. He's trying to get him set up by shaking him inside so he can get to the outside. Worfs is waiting on it. He's going to use that rip. And you can see what it does to Worf's shoulder here as he gets underneath him. Really good job by Worfs to stay balanced through there. Uche's not able to finish that rush. So he's starting to he's trying to put some tools together, string some moves together, try to get a tackle off balance, try to work around them. Just when you have a quality opponent, you better bring your A game. And so you're going to see the areas where Josh has some tools right now and some of the areas where he can fine tune. So we saw some power rush out of Van Noy. Let's see the power rush out of Uche on this one. Again, right here, number six. Slow it down. He buries his face in there. Most people are going to tell you to keep your head out, which totally understand. But you can see the strength he has on contact. Look at how up and down Worfs is. Now he was moving a foot, but still. Rocked back on that one. Initial contact. And Worfs going to try to reset. But Uche is in his chest and driving. Full extension and takes him back almost to the quarterback here. And this is a player in, in Worfs who's known for his strength. Really good strength initial on contact there. From Uche. All right, so now we're going to start to see some different alignments. 
more head up here over the tackle. And this is going to give him an opportunity to actually rush the B gap over the guard. So now we're going to get a chance to see what that interior rush might look like. So again, he's aligned head up, but he's going to come inside here. Really good first step. Heads in the gap. And now he's ripping underneath. Really good use of this rip movement. He's got good core strength and stability because he's got a guy leaning on him. I and mean, this offensive lineman is just fully leaning on his back here. And he's able to stay up, run himself out of that, and get up underneath the quarterback's arm. Ultimately an interception there. So we'll see Uche aligned outside again. More straight rush. He's going to bring some power. So we'll see. He's got some other matchups here in this cutup. We'll see some other moves, but he does like to bring a lot of power in here. And you can see, I mean, again, Worf, Worf's a strong guy. He's able to arch and fight back, but, man, Josh is giving him everything he can handle. So, again, we're up top. And again, he's going to come with that rip. And we can see when he sinks that rip, what he's able to do to try to work the corner here. Again, good get off. Flashes that inside arm, which he's ultimately going to use to rip underneath. Sinks that rip. And then try to run that circle. And that's just a big guy leaning on you on that one. That gets very rough. So now we'll see him against Penn State here. Same alignment. And he's going to see that he sees the tight ends blocking him. So, again, he's going to drop his head, which, again, most coaches are not going to like. He does leave with his hands, but he drops his head. But he's still able to feel that quarterback coming outside and flush out with him. So hits it thick, gets knocked back, feels that quarterback, and pursues. I think they're going to have a lot of fun working with him on tweaking some of these things to put himself in better position here. So now we're going to get a rep absolutely out in coverage. He's on number two here, pretty typical wall two type technique. where He's just waiting for number two to come inside, which he does, but really athletic in that drop, does not look out of place dropping like that, which is which is not something we see often. Now he's 6'1", 245, but still, that ability to be fluid in those situations is not always common. Now we're going to see him up here against Notre Dame. Come off the edge. Now, here again, we're going to start to see some varied stuff. Clearly, when he had Werfs, he felt like his power and his rip were going to be his best assets. We're going to see a little more in terms of his just edge rush here. Again, he flashes and pulls that rip, but he definitely beat that tackle to the spot. Quarterback ends up flushing and dumping the ball out. So, again, we're going to have him with some depth. So, again, we saw Van Noy have to play in coverage. How does Josh relate here? And, again, one thing's the drops, but two's the coverage awareness. So we got number two and number, or sorry, number three and number two coming vertical. He's relating inside to three. When three commits inside where he's got help, he understands to fall off that and work back underneath number two and continue to sink until the quarterback flushes. So not only does he look fluid out there, he's actually showing an understanding of how this works, which I can imagine was getting the New England coaching staff very excited in this process. As Cameron Crew spent a little too much time on the referees for our liking, but but nonetheless. So again, off the screen a little bit, we're going to see him bail out of there. We're going to see him later on flip and relate, and then rally up to try to be on top of the quarterback against Ohio State. We're stacked inside, and again dropping out, relating to number two. And this is what happens. He doesn't. When you start to see snaps like this, and he is the 6'1", 245, you can see where people start to question whether or not he's the traditional edge type. But he has shown the power to compress against elite competition. 
He has shown the ability to drop in coverage. He has shown the ability to rush in the B gap on the interior side. And you start to stack so many of these things together. Again, it, it's a profile that doesn't necessarily fit into a preconceived label, but this is not a profile to run from. This is a guy that you want to, to execute with if you know what to do. And again, we talk about a best fit series. Really excited to see New England get a player like this. Again, here you're going to see him push into rush interior. We're going to see reductions here. So he's coming in the B gap. They're going to make their checks. And Ohio State's pointing it out. They're waiting on it. And he still does a really good job of engaging, fighting inside. What he does have is he has this looper coming all the way back around, which is what allows him to come inside. They're running a three-man game here. Now, Fields is quick, so he's not able to finish on that quarterback. You're going to hear a lot about Justin Fields here in the next few months as we lead up to next year's draft. But definitely got the pressure out there and forced him to try to make a play outside of it. So now let's look at their last game, their bowl game here, Alabama. And we're going to see him go against Jedrick Wills, the 10th overall selection. So we saw him against, go against number 13 in Tristan Wirfs. Now we're going to see him go against number 10 in uh, Jedrick Willis. And this is one of the areas where he's going to have to continue to improve. He was all Big Ten his junior year, even when he wasn't a starter with seven sacks. Brought a similar number back to the table this year as the primary starter. Last year, Rashawn Gary and Chase Winovich held him out. Ironically, Winovich is going to be his teammate. We're going to see him flash and rip and try to work that. So he clearly understands that set of counters. He clearly understands his work with power. What he's going to need to do is really start to enhance – the rest of that profile. Uh, here's an athletic play. We're going to see him rush over the top of the guard, hit him thick. So he's coming in to hit this guard here right now. Again, the center's up underneath him. So that that's going to cause the knockdown. So it's not necessarily – we've already seen the power on contact. We know that's there. It happens here, although the offensive lineman gets tripped. This is the part that was fascinating. Again, this body angle, he's basically laying down. He's able to, boom, keep his feet underneath him and fight back to the quarterback. I mean, again, this is the stuff when you start to measure athletic ability. Those are the things that you're looking for, the balance, the body control, the, the explosive stuff everybody sees. But those are the nuanced things that when you can bring those, it can get to be really impactful. So, again, let's bring this to the end copy. Always better when we're looking at those trench players. So here he is standing up. All right, so let's bring this back for a second. So, again, 10th overall selection here, trying to power down. It's a tough block against a strong player. Wills tries to plan on this leg. Now I'll tell you what's about athlete. Watch 74 bounce back up. All right, the initial shock here from Uche is really good, but I'm going to sneak ahead here. Just see 74. You're not going to see big guys get up like that. That That's really impressive. All right, sorry. That, that notwithstanding, here comes Uche with power and then relate back inside. So we know he has those skill sets, um, clearly things that the New England staff know that they can work with and get excited about. He's going to have to refine his pass rush plan and his moves, add a few more counters to him, but he can rush inside. He can stunt and twist. He understands coverage. He can rush off the edge. There's a lot of things that New England will be able to do, and they're going to be a very excited staff because of it. Mm -hmm.